This question deals with a 32-year-old woman comes to the physician because she has not been able to conceive for five years. Previous fertility exam of her husband shows no abnormalities. Menses occur at regular 28-day intervals. Her blood pressure is 110 over 70. Physical and pelvic exams shows no abnormalities. Hysterosalpangeography shows normal findings. Her serum hormone concentration are within reference range. Which of the following is the most appropriate pharmacotherapy for this patient's infertility? So in this question, this patient's husband is fine because the fertility testing shows that the husband has no abnormalities. But, but she hasn't been able to conceive for five years. She's only 32. It says that the menses occur at regular 28-day intervals. So she's having menses, so her HPO, uh, HPO axis or hypothalamus pituitary axis is fine. Her blood pressure is okay. Pelvic exam shows no abnormalities. Uh, hysterosalpingeography shows normal findings. So everything is really normal. Even her hormone concentration are within reference range. So which of the following is the appropriate pharmacotherapy for this patient's infertility? So for some reason, her egg is not reaching the uterus. Her egg is not fertilized. Maybe the egg is not even being uh, released from the ovary. She's not having ovulation for some reason. That could be the only uh, explanation for this because everything else seems normal. Now here I listed some of the common causes of uh, anovulation. Uh, they are PCOS, obesity, Asherman syndrome, HPO axis abnormalities, premature ovarian failure, hyperprolactinoma, thyroid disorders, Cushing syndrome, adrenal insufficiency. So let's rule them out one, one at a time. If the patient had PCOS, then her hormones would not be within reference range. So I would cross this out. Uh, she does not have HPO axis abnormalities for the same reason. She does not have premature ovarian failure because of the same reason. She does not have hyperprolactinoma for the same reason. Now we are left with obesity, Asherman syndrome, then we are left with thyroid disorders, Cushing syndrome, and adrenal insufficiency. And let's say she was genetically a male, but she turned out to be a female, then we would see something in our physical exam. A hysterosalpangeography would have showed some findings where we could have justified this to be the cause. So even that is ruled out. Now we are left with these ones, obesity. The question does not show any indication that the patient is obese. Okay, Asherman syndrome usually causes adhesions and the, you know, um, the egg will not be able to come to the, to the, to the uterus, but then we see, uh, we do a hysterosalpangeography, so even that is ruled out, there is no adhesions, then we would have seen it in, in, in this, in this exam, but this exam turns out to be normal. So now we're left with thyroid disorders. Her HPO axis is normal, and I, I'm assuming that HPO axis for all the hormones are normal. So even that's, these two are also ruled out. So really, we are left with obesity, and it just could be that she's having some sort of problem where she's just not getting eggs being ovulated from her ovum. So in this case, the best drug would be uh, making uh, making the egg ovulate from the from the uterus. So in this particular situation, we would be giving her clomiphene so that she has um, she has a lot more eggs than one egg a month for for proper uh, proper fertilization.